I've published a circuit about an electrolytic capacitor tester uh, two days ago. And I will give the link in the text box. And uh, I want to show more about this test method, etc. Uh, this is only a vlog, so I give, say, some ideas. And uh, well, everyone's free to give uh, other insights. Anyway, I tested all these capacitors here and they all showed good on the meter that I published uh, two days ago. Here are capacitors that still have to be tested. Here is that meter again. This is the schematic. And I have found, say, uh, some interesting things that I want to show. Uh, here uh, are the things that I wanted to tell. I have tested quite a lot of capacitors, say a few hundred electrolytics, all electrolytics, and I indicated uh, many of them as weak. But the real situation is that they have to be retested for their specific properties, because I found, say, many uh, deviations in the scope views when I tested them. So many, many 16 volt capacitors, 10 microfarad, 15 microfarad, etc. Uh, when I tested them with the unit here, push the button, uh, I found that the square wave dropped to a very low value and I indicated that as weak. But the problem is, are they really weak? Of course, I also found many real defective capacitors. They are here. Uh, they show, for instance, that they can be charged or cannot be charged. And even when they can be charged, and I test the ESR, uh, I see a quite big square wave on the screen of my oscilloscope. That means that there is a voltage drop parallel to that capacitor that in a DC, in the, in the DC test here, works good anyway. So, um, they were really defective. And here I have some doubts and I'm going to retest them all anyway. Uh, I found, for instance, also that capacitors between 0 0.1 microfarad and 0 0.47 microfarad, and then I mean the typical electrolytics, showed this waveform. And that proved to be normal because I have compared that, say, electrolytic cap of such a value here. Bipolar aluminum electrolytic compared to a non-polar uh, capacitor, foil capacitor, of the same value, uh, showed exactly the same waveform on the oscilloscope. And that was this waveform, say normal. And here you see quite a few 1 microfarad or uh, 0 0.47 microfarad kind of electrolytics that show this waveform and uh, compared to a nonpolar capacitor of the same value it shows the same waveform so I am more or less sure that they are good. Uh, and more in general regarding the DC test when you push the button, see the meter move.
from the right side to the left side. Uh, the capacitor is charged and is fully charged, so no current flows any longer. Uh, it's a good idea to say uh, use a few capacitors uh, that are fresh, that are recently bought, say 10 microfarad, 40 microfarad, 100 microfarad, and compare them to all the capacitors that you have perhaps stored during the past time. Could be 10 years or whatever, anyway. And the dropouts are clearly visible. So let me first demonstrate here this capacitor that shows kind of a, uh, say, standard uh, scope view on the oscilloscope. And I have uh, ordered them as weak, but they are not weak. I think I have to retest them, find another test method. And here is what happens when you test such a capacitor on its ESR. Well, there is a this is the the voltage parallel to the capacitor when the capacitor is not present and here when the capacitor bridges that uh, square wave oscillator. So I've indicated them all as weak but I retest them and I want to find a more specific say test method to get a much better insight. And the next question is of course is ESR important? Well that's a uh, complete and good question and I want to tell more about that. I wanted to tell first that these capacitors failed on leak, the leak current. That leak current was too high uh, compared to the capacitive value and that meant that the meter on the DC test constantly was here in this position also for on the long, longer term. Uh, the question here is, is ESR important? Well, uh, I have to say ESR is for me a, a quite new phenomenon. I've worked with electronics since the 1970s, uh, had never say a good idea about ESR, but uh, anyway it's of course a phenomenon in electronics and I want to show my ideas about it. Uh, so is ESR important? Well I think uh, in my opinion that when you use an electrolytic capacitor as a coupling capacitor the ESR tested on 200 kc so the resistance that such a capacitor has on 200 kilocycles is not very important. That's only an idea. I have to keep this video short, otherwise my camera runs out. So in a coupling capacitor, uh, in a coupling uh, application, I, my idea is that is not important. In a decoupling application, I think it's important. Because we have, we have here a voltage, that voltage can have some ripple and that will have an effect on the capacitor and how the circuit will uh, uh, work properly or not properly or halfway properly etc. So in this application, when you use it here in this application, I think it's important. Another application is the the use of an electrolytic in an audio AF, so an audio amplifier, <coughs> often it's 10 microfarad, this is 1K, 27K, 10K, BC547, anyway, uh, I think it's not very important. Could be that it differs, but anyway. You can use an electrolytic in a timer circuit. So the voltage slowly builds up to a certain value 
and when that capacitor is shortcut in one or another way the waveform will drop down to zero etc and I think perhaps it's important could be especially on high frequency circuits say in such an application there is 200 kc uh, that will surely have an effect on the capacitor and that also means that in say a uh, an application like this where a high frequency current on such a high frequency 200 kc or whatever can be active it will have an effect and finally a, sm a smoothing capacitor I think it will have an effect the ESR the equivalent series resistance could be too high and that means that in that capacitor uh, heat can develop that can also uh, appear in this application anyway happy new year by the way um, so in this moving capacitor I think it's important it could be important anyway uh, correct me if I'm wrong and here again that first page important to tell that uh, with one microfarad capacitors or 0.1 microfarad capacitors bipolar or polar uh, you see this kind of waveform and that's normal so perhaps it's interesting to show again uh, the normal behavior of that capacitor I push the button and you can see it here I indicated that as weak but I'm absolutely not sure uh, perhaps it's interesting to show a super bad capacitor it's this one it is say um, well, 10 microfarad at 50 volts. I hook it up now to the tester. Minus to the minus, positive, connected. Let's look at first at the DC test. It shows nothing. That means that no current is flowing. That's a bad sign for such a capacitor of say 20 microfarad or so. And here the test on ESR and it's very funny to see that there is a kind of effect here. You see that there is say <laughs> there is a kind of minimum minimal ringing or whatever so this capacitor does nothing at all completely nothing uh, another bad capacitor oh well perhaps it's more interesting to show how a 0.22 microfarad capacitor non-polar this is by the way electrolytic the capacitor tester so it's not made for non-polar capacitors to test them but anyway uh, it shows say uh, how you can compare certain situations I only have uh, 30 seconds so here is that uh, non-polar cap how does it act on ESR well you see this so you have to learn, see, get insight when you uh, work are working with this electrolytic capacitor tester. Uh, say you have five or ten healthy capacitors, compare them, compare their uh, their test results, and especially the waveforms on the scope. with the healthy and non-healthy capacitor 
perhaps I have one minute and when the video uh, uh, suddenly stops anyway no problem uh, another bad electrolytic that's what I wanted to show that's this one test it you see a small charge current and here you see you see how it acts on the ESR also the same phenomenon in fact nothing happens so the whole the whole capacitor doesn't work anyway these were, were some first ideas these it's only a vlog thanks for watching happy new year